How many people can you fit on a tank? I don't know what the hell happened here. I guess everybody decided to uh, spawn in on the tank and we all spawned on top of the tank. Glitch? I guess so. And away we go. I get shoved off quick, but watch the guy in front of the tank that's getting pushed. He's getting snow plowed. <laughs> wonder if he gets taken all the way to the city. And I'm on foot. I guess I should have turned around and looked to see if there are any more vehicles, but fuck it. Let's take a look at this map. This is Strike at Carcan. This is Battlefield 3. This is the expansion. And that building just got shot by that jet. And doesn't that look cool? And later on, I'll be running this road again. And actually, the, uh, the billowing smoke actually changes over time. It'll soon turn into flames coming out the windows. And it'll take on a different look. The, the destruction kind of materializes. And... Uh, I pulled out the javelin here. It's my first time firing it. It's about a five second lock on and uh, shoot it in the sky and boom. Get your kills but then walk into a flank and get uh, put on your ass. So that was my first javelin kill. You know, hope I'm uh, really impressing people. I impressed myself and I'll probably be using that a lot more. Later on in the game I didn't get many opportunities to pull it out though so uh, it seems like we controlled all the tanks. So talking about this map, Strike at Carcan, this was one of the original Battlefield 2 maps. I don't really see a resemblance to you guys. I mean, I know it's dolled up a lot, but I, I remember the the old one in Battlefield 2, and I don't really see it. But I'm not complaining because this is one sexy map. I think this is the best looking map out of all the four that they released. Um, this one is sort of similar to... Uh, Sharky Peninsula, but it just has more, I don't know, side streets and ghettos and upper class areas. It's just more of a polished city. Anyway, I really, really like it. I'm not a big fan so far of Wake Island. I think it's too linear, and it reminds me of heavy metal close quarters for some reason. I, I do like playing around in the vehicles, but... I know my experience so far with Wake Island is it's just too much. There's just friggin' too many tanks and too many jets and too much shit going on. And uh, maybe it was just the night. Maybe I have to get caught up in the action. And But all it was was just engineers running around in tank farm. But everybody needs uh, needs their kicks as far as their engineers and their tank killing and, and their vehicles and stuff. So they had to throw it in there. And who knows, maybe you guys really, really like it. I'm not a big fan. Maybe it'll grow on me. Who knows? But this map. Loving this map. Uh, no two buildings are the same. Remember in Bad Company 2, you'd, you'd go into some of the buildings and it was always the same. Two doorways, the closet, you know, one floor up, one floor down, and a little bit of a balcony on top. This is all different. Everything's laid out differently. Even the, uh, the flags are in really, really cool areas. There's lots of ways you can protect them in a hidden place. Uh, if you're seeing that flag go down, chances are you're not going to see the enemy who's taken it because there's so many places to hide. And I think that's great. And that's just going to promote more teamwork, you know, searching around, trying to find who's on the flag, who's got the flag. I mean, you can be sneaky as hell in some of these new maps. Pretty much all the Battlefield 3 maps I'm finding is really, really good map design and good layout. And it's not this, you know, you're not limited to certain areas where you can pr protect something like you found in Bad Company 2 where you could uh, you know, hang out in a closet and watch the flag from across the street and be guaranteed about four kills if you just sit there and camp it. So this this, uh, this gameplay footage, I'm running with the, A9, the A91. I haven't really used it a lot. I have been switching my kits around a lot, trying to get a good feel for the weapons, trying to uh, better my aim. been struggling with that lately. This gun seems all right. I mean, it, it tracks fine. I can keep it on target fine. Compared to some of the other ones that I have been using and really, really struggling. I don't think it's the recoil I can't manage. I'm, I don't know what it is. I just find this one I can lock on a little bit easier and I can keep the crosshairs on my target. But it, it could have just been the night. Who knows? I don't put enough hours into these games to, to critique them like some of the really really good players out there who can break down the stats of you know damage over distance and 
you know, all the fine tunings and finesse shit that go along with some of these rifles and LMGs and stuff like that. I, I can't do that. Pretty much, I shoot a gun. If it feels right in my hand, then, then I'm going to use it a lot. I'm not a big fan of the, the red dot I'm using. That throws me off a lot at... Medium to close range, this is really, really good. Long range, I mean, I do cheap out on a few kills with this. I really don't like using four times scopes or any type of optics on my guns because I find I'm not much of a hip shooter. I'll, I'll draw down the sights all the time, and that's kind of just a reaction thing for me, and I think it's a downfall because I do lose a lot of gunfights in that, even in, like, Operation Metro and stuff. I'm always looking down the sights. I think it's because... I'm so in tune with spotting. I, I've learned that from the beginning, and I pretty much spot everything before I shoot, and that sometimes gets me in trouble. If I have a four times scope on, and I'm at close range to someone, I zoom in, you don't have the panning ability that you did when you could just hip fire, and I usually lose out. But it's just a reaction thing for me, kind of like the dolphin dive when I uh, push down too hard on the sticks when I panic. I always look down the sights when I see someone. Close range, long range, whatever. I don't know if that's a habit I can get out of. I guess that just comes with experience. I know some players get really, really good at hip firing. And uh, maybe I'll try that on one of my other videos. Just uh, won't scope in on anything. I'll just try and play a whole round hip firing. I don't know what's going on here. If there was some lag or something. Or if that guy was just sniffing his ass. Or it looked like he was in the full knife animation. But I got the kill. So I'm not sure if that's right or wrong. You shouldn't be denied a kill if you got a blade to a guy's throat. But... I don't know, maybe you guys can comment on that and let me know. There's some more long range stuff. I should have just hit the deck and stayed away because I'm just not a good enough shot to engage those guys from where I am. And this guy was kicking my ass all night long. He put me on my ass more times than I've eaten apples in my life, I think. Which was pretty impressive. He was a good player. Um, yeah, I just hats off to him, man. He was doing really, really good. All four games I played this night, that guy, I'm sure he was my nemesis the whole time. But pretty sexy map, huh? Guys, see how now that building now is starting to show some flames and the, the smoke's getting bigger and you can see it, the perspective, how it's drifted off in the horizon there? That's pretty awesome. And I think once you get closer to town here, you can actually you, you kind of get into the, the cloud, the shadow of, of that smoke. Really impressed with what they've done with these maps. And hell, I'm still getting used to playing the uh, the regular Battlefield 3 maps. I get screwed here too. What do you guys think? I know I did kind of pan off to the left there, but I think I got an enough rounds in them to drop them. And it seemed like that was a one-shot kill for him. So back to that whole beta thing. Is that coming back with the, uh, the pop pop and you go down? Meanwhile, you're uh, shooting like a bat out of hell like, like this guy. And I spawn in here, and the guy's on the ground, and it's a whole clip. Before I see the, uh... Like, that's, that's just weird. It's gotta be lag. It's gotta be lag. Anyway, I'm not gonna analyze that, because I don't know shit about that kind of stuff. And, uh, I'll drive myself nuts if I try to overanalyze crap like that. This is a video game, and, uh, my friends told me to relax and give up on the whole squad communication thing that, uh... Yes, it is a shitty thing that they can't get it fixed right now, or ever... Maybe, who knows, to be decided. But I need to uh, lay off that stuff and appreciate what the good people of DICE have uh, have given us. And that's some pretty awesome maps and a pretty cool military shooter that uh, that is Battlefield 3. Graphics are awesome, sounds awesome. Ten new weapons with these four maps. I uh, can't name them all. I know the, the FAMAS is one of them, or FAMAS, or whatever you guys want to call it. Uh, it's killed me a lot so far. Looks like a good gun. A lot of people are using it. I think there's three more vehicles. Bunch of... Uh, what do you call them? On 360, they call them achievements. What do they call them in uh, PlayStation? Shit, I don't know. Maybe they're achievements, too. Some crap like that. But uh, the biggest gift that they've been so far are just the map design. I think it's awesome. I'll be bringing to you two more maps. Shark Eye Peninsula last night. This one, I don't have a lot of time to process these things. I'm a working man. I get home, uh, play with the kids, eat supper, that sort of thing. Um, by the time I get a few audio takes and put some commentary down on these things, I pretty much can do one a night. 
I got each of the maps covered pretty, pretty good, and uh, I'll try to bring each one of you, each one of these maps to you guys, you know, within the next couple days. I'm hoping. And I hope you guys like what you're seeing. Uh, it's not beastly gameplay footage, but it is giving you guys a taste of, of what's to come for you if you haven't played these ones yet. Or uh, if you're a PC player or an Xbox 360 player. Damn. Unfortunate that guy was behind cover the whole time. I kind of showed my ass when I started firing my weapon, so... I was in a bad spot to begin with, but I get revived, so uh, thank you so much to that guy who uh, revived me at the right time. And moving on. I, it, I can't wait to explore this map more because if each... It seems like every building has got a door or some, some way you can get into it. Like I know a lot of them are closed up, but a lot of them you can get into, guys, and, and this is going to be awesome. Don't ask me what I'm doing here. Seems I've been getting to these flags at the, uh, you know, the last second and not cashing in on some of these, uh, some of these points. But I'm not going to start talking about the communication thing, even though I know that uh, simple as workable mics would would. Ch no, I'm not going to do it. Never mind. Never mind. I'm not going to talk. So you can see here, I'm I'm trying to roll some flanks and learn some flanks and trying to get on the outskirts of the map and see where I can go and where I can't go, as well as helping out my team. I mean, I don't want to be a punk and not play the objective, but I also want to do you know get my fingers dirty and explore and get out there and see some stuff. I'm sure that's what everyone's doing, so I'm not going to feel too bad about it. What I, I can't get what a great looking map. I can't get over this one. So probably tomorrow night I'll put up the uh, the Gulf of Oman or maybe the Wake Island. I'm not too sure. Whichever one I get my uh, get up on the uh, the Premier Pro first, which is what I edit on, and hopefully I'll have better luck with commentating. This is my fourth. Uh, commentary tonight, our fourth take, trying to get this this one done. I'm a little bit tired, and uh, you know I should be in bed, but kind of want to get these videos up and out the door. I got about three quarters of the way through three of them, and I had to stop the one time my son came down, and uh, you know told me good night and stuff, and blew my concentration. But we'll let that one slide because you know family comes first. The other two times, I, I'm not sure what happened. I just kind of forgot what I wanted to say. Commentating can be a real pain in the ass, and I hope I'm not boring you. I'm trying to talk about the footage. That's eventually going to get boring once everybody knows the maps, and you know you're not really paying attention to my videos for for my ability to kill people. You know, once the the drama and the the glitz and the glam of the new map is over, I mean I'm going to have to get some new material. So I don't know. What do you do? Do I do a, a personal video where I let you guys know a little bit about myself? Is that kind of hokey and sketchy? Do you like, uh, you know, play-by-play -play shit? I don't know. 18 minutes is a long time to talk, guys, and my throat's starting to get dry. That's a, a downfall of being a video commentator on some of these games. If you played Call of Duty, you can have four-minute matches. These ones last over 20 minutes. So I guess I can get in a little bit about myself. Um... You know, why the hell not, eh? So, uh, AA Fitzy 88 that's, uh, my PSN name. And if you want to know why, it's, uh, it's a lucky poker hand for me. Unlucky for some, lucky for me. The, uh, Aces and Eights, which is also known as the Dead Man's Hand. Because that was the, uh, the poker hand that Cowboy Wild Bill Hickok was shot in the back. That's the hand he was holding when he was shot in the back in, uh, Deadwood, South Dakota. And, uh, you know, everybody likes a good cowboy story, and that's one of my favorites. But the reason why I like it is, um, I actually have it tattooed on my right hand, on, on the knuckles, the two aces and the two eights. I was at a, uh, I went to Laconia, New Hampshire for a motorcycle uh, week, a bike week, with some friends of mine. And I'm also a bit of a tattoo enthusiast, not so much as I was 
you know, back a few years ago. But uh, there's the, some guys from the Bronx, New York, uh, Asylum Tattoo, which I'm a big fan of. And, you know, you, when you're a fan of somebody, you always want, especially tattoos, you want a piece of their work. And when I was at this bike show, or this bike week, they were down there tattooing people. And, of course, I'm with my friends and we're always, you know, in and out on the bikes. And you can't sit still for too long, so it's not like I'm going to get a a major piece but I did want some of their work on my body so I decided to get the aces and eights tattooed on uh, on my right hand on my knuckles so that's the story of my my PSN name the AA5088 also I won a poker tournament with that hand um, I'm not gonna say how much money I won but uh, yeah I, I, did, I did pretty good and like I said unlucky for some but but lucky for me that's that's my lucky poker hand also, I'm uh, an elderly gentleman. I am uh, 40 years young, which is probably ancient to some of you guys that uh, watch my videos or play these games, but uh, young at heart. I'm, I'm a gamer for life. I like to say I'd like to be doing this when I'm 50. Who knows? <laughs> uh, I do know people that are 50 that still play these games and have fun doing it. I'm a family man. I got uh, two young kids. They're at the age now where they sap a lot of a lot of time out of out of me but it's always going to be family first and uh, I get some they give me a break sometimes you know mama's good to me every once in a while she'll take the kids off my back and she'll say let dad have his his playtime because I don't get much of it and I, I thank her for that I'm uh, an auto worker I work at a uh, auto assembly plant actually it's a, a Toyota plant and we build cars there and uh, I'm actually in a special projects where I kind of work on other things. I'm not really tied to the line. I'm uh, I work in the quality department, so I'm crunching numbers and busting down graphs and trying to make improvements and uh, build better cars. So that's what I do to make money, and it pays well, and I get good holidays, and I get to afford nice little toys. Um, my both my kids are in school. My daughter is only. She goes to school every other day, but she really should go every day because she's definitely ready for it. But uh, my wife's slowly getting back to work, and uh, that's good because I think she's been uh, getting a little bored or a little strung out with the kids for the last eight years. But it's pretty soon they'll all be in the school full time, and mommy and daddy will get back to having their our own me time. It's, but this gameplay is coming to an end. That's a little bit about me. Maybe I'll carry on with that in the future. More games to come. Thanks for watching, guys. My throat's dry. Uh, peace out. Talk to you later. And uh, fix the mics. Dice.